Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another movie review, you guys. And we're talking about the Clark Sisters. Okay, so I'm just gonna start out by telling y'all I'm familiar with the Clark Sisters, but I don't know their music like that, okay? So I was very interested to see this movie because I was like, please tell me something that I don't know, okay? Because, you know, your girl sings in a choir, you know, well, you know, in, in simpler times, I sang in a choir. And um, also, your girl just loves gospel music. Like, I all, I get the chills, I get the feels, everything, okay? <laughs> so, I was just here for this movie. And also because it's produced by Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott, and Mary J. Blige. Because they're such big fans of the Clark Sisters, okay? Now... Y'all, I gotta tell y'all, I love Anjanu Ellis. Like, I'm so mad that I didn't try to get her autograph or a picture with her when I saw her at the On The Run tour some years back. I saw her there and, you know, here in New Orleans, I think she might have been filming or something and went to the concert. But I was like, is that Anjanu Ellis over there? And she was like, you know, running to go into the, uh, you know, the main area of the concert. So I, you know, didn't get a chance to, but I really wish I would have because I am such a huge fan of Anjanou Ellis and it's because she's such a great actress I mean I'll take you back to Ray with Anjanou Ellis okay like that's where I really fell in love with her when she played Marianne on Ray I also loved her on The Mentalist like there's so many things um I heard that she's on NCIS uh LA I never watched that when I need to get into that one where can I stream that somebody tell me where can I stream uh NCIS or whatever the acronym is where can I because I want to see her in that I heard that she in uh, LL Cool J are really good in that one but yeah so the Clark sisters y'all the Clark sisters are Jackie, Twinkie, Dorinda, Nisi, and Karen okay Karen Clark Shield okay it is the one who jumps out in my mind the most I guess because she had like a really successful solo career so I know who Karen Clark Shield is okay but I wasn't familiar with their mom okay Zakta Maddie uh, Clark I think there's a middle name that I'm forgetting but either way y'all Anjanu Ellis plays their mom Maddie okay Dr. Maddie Clark okay and I feel like they didn't even really give um, the deets on the mom the way they could have. Zaxa Maddie is actually responsible for the three-part harmony that is so prevalent in gospel music of today. And if somebody, you know, if you sing in a choir, you know it's all about your sopranos, your altos, and your tenors, okay? So, you know. I, I just, y'all, look, I was so here for this movie. It was so well done. I really enjoyed this movie, y'all. So I didn't write down verbatim everything that happened, but I have a clear picture, and I feel like I've been watching it, like, <laughs> since last night. I watched it last night, and then I watched it again this morning, you know, in bits and pieces, and it's actually on my TV right now in the background. Clark sisters are some church-going sisters that grew up with their mom, okay, Dr. Maddie Clark. She was a minister of music at her church. And whenever a song would come to her, like that's how the movie started, in the middle of the night, the song comes to her, she gets up to play it out on the piano, and she calls her five daughters downstairs so that they can act out the melodies that she has in her head. And it was just magical to watch. It was very reminiscent of the scene from the Jackson 5 movie, where you see the daddy have them all come downstairs and perform like in the middle of the night like <laughs> over and over and over again i see somebody put a meme that the the holy trinity of do that shit again is maddie joe jackson and beyonce's daddy i said i know that's right it worked though it worked because those are some successful singing people that come from those parents okay sometimes you know the crazy parents they really do instill work ethic in their children and that's really what you saw maddie instilling great work ethic i mean great vocal ability first of all she had her masters i believe like she she went to school so she can teach people how to sing and and you know piano and classical voice and all that type of stuff opera like so this lady knows what she's doing, like for real, for real. Not somebody that just started out in the church and continued in the church. No, there's somebody that went to school for this on top of the church, okay? So she was such an influential person in her church because of the music that she was able to produce and create. And so, you know, as the years went on, she had her children performing in a choir and then they started to record music and they started to get bigger and bigger and they do these gospel conferences and they do, you know, shows and they go to different churches 
churches and they sing. They travel all around the states for years doing that, being successful but not as successful. But Twinkie, Twinkie, uh, I forget, you know, uh, she's not the oldest. The oldest is Jackie. But Twinkie is the sister that seems to have the closest relationship with Maddie, the mother. She is kind of her caregiver. She's the person I believe that still lived at home with her when you see Dorinda, Jackie, and Karen and Denise all, you know, having uh, either families or husbands. Well, child Denise was the only one that didn't have a husband for the longest but had a family because she kept having cheering out of wedlock, okay? You know them church people don't like that. So that was an issue the entire time that they're in this group is that Denise is living this life outside of the church that is not okay once you get inside the church and of course maddie the mom is so church you know what i'm saying like you can't even wear pants in her house church which is so crazy <laughs> like at the end of the day i said child when the lord start caring about what clothes i put on when i go to my mama house i don't know nothing okay look i was just sitting up here like geez church people are crazy as hell <laughs> church people is crazy lord i tell you so twinkie actually produced their first number one which was the song that kind of catapulted them into you know stardom and had like a lot of people knowing their name all over the place you brought the sunshine okay you brought the sunshine all through the lifeline through the lifeline you know the whole thing okay because i told y'all i don't know their music like that but i've been listening to it ever since you know it was on the movie because i was so touched like i love gospel music so there's so much in it that sounds familiar to me because like you know once you hear gospel music for some reason you start like hearing all the songs that you love that's gospel music <laughs> okay look i have not been able to get you know gospel music out of my head since i watched this last night but you brought the sunshine was their first number one hit on the gospel charts okay then at some point twinkie sells all of her music for a damn car y'all a catalog of music that she and the sisters have been performing this entire time okay like a great chunk of their career she sells this music the masters to her music for a car and y'all her mama was like see that's what i'm talking about twinkie okay that's what you do you don't do nothing but make bad decisions okay you make good music but you make bad decisions that's why i told you let me handle the business okay i don't know why they didn't listen to the mama the mama knew what she was talking about okay the mama was handling that business child when i seen that she she girl i could not believe that she gave all her music away for a damn call it was like twinkie was wrong with you you gotta know that that's not equal right y'all i was blue by that child the mama was mad the sister was mad we was all mad at twink for that one i was like twink girl oh my god so then they go to the grammys okay they go to the grammys and maddie performs with her daughters for the grammys this gets Maddie kicked out of her church because it's a whole bunch of men that don't like the fact that Maddie is getting all this acclaim. She just performed on Grammys and they think she's getting too big for her britches. So they want to knock her down. They tell her in order for her to keep her seat on, you know, at the church or whatever, doing whatever she was doing, minister of music, whatever, in order for her to keep that chair. She was going to have to stop performing with her daughters. And she she was like, okay, she was getting ready to walk out. But then she walked back and she was like, no, y'all are not about to take this from me, okay? Y'all are trying to separate me from my children because y'all are intimidated by my greatness. This is my calling. Just like you sitting in front of that pulpit is your calling. This is my calling, okay? Oh, I was so glad when she said that because them men made me some mad. Let me tell y'all, this whole movie it seems to me was like about how women have to give up so much in order to fulfill their purpose, okay? And it's so funny because I feel like it's a similar situation to what Candy is going through on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I haven't re reviewed that yet, so we're going to talk about that on that video. But it just brings it to mind because Maddie, the mama, was married uh, twice okay in the second marriage is the one we actually got to see her husband albert okay who was also a pastor and couldn't take the fact that maddie was traveling and doing her music with her daughters because he needed his woman to be right there on his side championing him 24 7 in order for him to feel like a man so because she could not give up her calling in order to make him feel good the way he wanted her to he then starts to beat on her okay 
So once that happened, you know, they ended up getting a divorce. She got the house and it was all good. Child, that man even smacked Jackie talking about you not my child anyway. I say, low down, dirty dog. Okay, now I'm not telling y'all stuff in any particular order. Okay, just letting y'all know because that had happened way at the beginning of the movie. But it was one of the main themes of the movie about how she had to give up her seat at the church in order to be able to perform the music with her daughters. It's not something she should have had to do. That's not a sacrifice that anybody should have asked of Maddie. You know what I'm saying? I was so glad when she said that that was her calling because I feel like it's so many times that women have to give up what they feel like is their calling or their talent because they have children and they want to be a wife and a mother as well. You know what I mean? I think it's so unfair. And I'm also tired of women feeling like, oh no, women are, you know, we do certain things a certain way. So we're the only ones that can do that. No, everybody's family, everybody's situation is different. And it's the church and that old mindset is the reason why that lady had to die alone. Miss Maddie, okay? Because you can't have no man if you can't have no husband. And you can't have a man because any man you be with is going to try to stump out your light in order to make himself feel better, especially in this time period. You talking about 60s, 70s, 80s, you know what I'm saying, 90s, specifically 70s and 80s, okay? Any man that was strong enough to be with Miss Maddie was also going to be too weak to be able to deal with the fact that she walked in her own purpose. It just wasn't the time frame for her to be able to find somebody, Jesus, okay? Especially not the way she, you know, kind of blocked herself off, the way women in church have to a lot of the times. It's just sad, you know what I mean? It's really upset me. Let me tell y'all something, okay? The acting was so good in this movie. Not just with Anjanou Ellis, but also the women who played the actual Clark sisters. Starting with Raven Goodwin, okay? Who we've seen, you know, in Tyler Perry movies and, and things of that nature. Raven Goodwin acted her ass off in this movie playing Denise Clark, okay? She's the sister with the seven children, okay? That she didn't have, you know, most of them out of wedlock and all of this, okay? Because of how the church folks act, they've had, you know, asked her to hide her children and all of this type of stuff. And she is just tired of being under the mama's thumb. So when they get ready to sign their big record label contracts, everybody's sitting around the table excited and happy. And Denise come out her mouth mad because Maddie won't watch her child for her okay maddie said no baby i can't watch your children for you okay you need to watch your own children i didn't raise mine okay now you know them hot in the puss ladies they don't never like to hear when their mama can't take care of their damn children for them okay so she get mad because maddie told her that she couldn't watch her kids right before they went in there to sign those contracts so when she went in there she decided that she wasn't going to sign the contract and she wasn't going to be a part of the Clark sisters anymore because she felt like it was continuing being under the mama's thumb. And it seems the sisters had that issue with feeling like they couldn't be themselves because they were always having to be, you know, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost Clark sisters. And that's a lot for anybody to live up to, especially when you're growing up and trying to become your own person and nobody's really giving you room to do that because you have to fit into the confines of what your mama wants for you, what the church expects of you, and what the gospel community expects of you when you want to be a gospel singer we've seen people crack under that pressure we've seen the way the gospel community the church community treats people when they don't fit into the confines of what they feel like is you know sanctified and filled with the holy ghost it's too much okay so a lot of the sisters were having issues with how it felt to be under mama's thumb all the time specifically niecy and twinkie had issues with being under their mama's thumb all the time so denise quit the group because she said the mama never put enough in her she put everything into the other sisters but she didn't put nothing in her i said child i don't have time for those types of children niecy get the hell over it baby okay it's obvious that that mama put what she felt she needed to in everybody that mama loved all of y'all she took all of y'all with her to the store she took all of y'all with her to the church okay so don't be sitting up there trying, oh you did this I, I didn't like that at all okay Denise you get your life okay <laughs> like I was just like girl if you don't stop with this foolishness she don't like the way you want to be out in a secular world okay it's not fair but it is what it is to make it seem like your mom put less love into you because she don't like the way you out here living your life having children with all of these men and all of that type of stuff 
Child, please, what you expect from that lady? Even if she wasn't in the church, I don't know one mama that's like, oh, yeah, continue to have children out of wedlock from random niggas. Like, nobody's mama is telling them that that's what's up. So I just kind of felt like Nisi was being way too hard on Maddie, but Raven Goodwin acted her ass off, okay? But she, you know, she left the group. And I'm going to tell y'all another thing. I don't like the way the other sisters treated Nisi either. Even though I understand their aggravation because of the way they feel like she treated their mama, okay? Because I understand how that feels when you feel like you the sibling that's close to the parent and you see your other siblings disrespect the parent how they feel. So I get that, okay? But at the end of the day, I felt like they all kind of acted stank with Nisi because Nisi was the black sheep of the family. It kind of seems like because the mama treated her that way, the sisters kind of adopted that same mode, except for Twinkie. Twinkie seemed to be like the only one that was a little bit softer to Denise. Denise leaves the group, they continue to sing, okay? Twinkie is writing amazing songs, they continue to sing, but then Twinkie finds her a man named John who ain't worth shit, ain't got no job, nothing but wants to live off of the famous Twinkie clock because she's a clock sister. I said she should have ran then. The mama knew. The mama knew when she saw him, okay? Bad decisions, good music, Twink. Bad decisions, good music. So for some reason, Twink felt like she had to get away from Maddie. She had to get away from the mama. So instead of staying in the group, like all the rest of her sisters who have also gotten married have with the exception of Denise, Twinkie decides that she needs to leave with her man to go to North Carolina and leave her mama and the group so she can have something of her own. She's tired of always having to share things with her sisters or having her dream be her mama's dream. She just needed some separation. And at the, at the end of the day, I understood that. I totally understood how Twinkie felt. I understood how Denise felt needing some separation from their mama and some independence from their family. I get that. But at the end of the day, John was not the move, okay? John was not the move at all because he felt like he can go out all night and get home and expect for her to be taking care of them all the time. Looking at her like she was the only one with working arms and legs around there. I said, child, <laughs> okay? So Twinkie told her mom and her sisters that she was leaving a group at rehearsal. And then later on, she shows up to her mom's house with John, okay, to tell her bye she's leaving for North Carolina. Of course, her mom is not trying to hit it. She shows her how they made room so she can take a break. You know, they look, we, we cleared up all of these dates for March and April, okay? So you can have as much time as you need. But she's not trying to hit it. She tells her mama, I need to get away from you. All my life, all I've done is try to please you. And she was like, you don't need to be trying to please me. You need to be trying to please God. And she was like, I don't know the difference no more, okay? So at the end of the day, Twink had to go, okay? Now the problem comes in when John comes into the house and tries to break Twink and Maddie apart because they was hugging, okay? And he pushed this lady mama down on the stairs. Now, mind you, Miss Maddie already walking around with a cane. And John pushed his mother-in-law down to the ground and then dragged Twinkie up out that house. I said, let me tell you something. I have loved many a people in my life, okay? And I have loved them hard, okay? And I don't mean many, handful. Loved you, okay? Loved your dirty drawers type shit. Never in my life would I let anybody put their damn hands on my mama, okay? Like, I'm telling y'all right now. Child, I talk about not leaving with John. John would have had to take my foot out of his ass after he pushed my mama down all in, on them stairs like that. Child, it would have been the moving of some damn furniture in that house the way that man pushed that lady mama. I was so upset, y'all. I was like, she still left with him after he pushed the lady mama like that. Oh my God, y'all, I was so upset, <laughs> okay? So she leaves. Now, all of this time goes by. Miss Maddie is getting sick. Jackie is trying to stay on top of her to take care of herself. You got diabetes, high blood pressure, black people probably gonna eat right, y'all know, okay? But mama say the Lord heal her. She ain't worrying about that. What she was worrying about is Twink and why she ain't talked to her nor Denise. But they not answering. I guess they really needed the break. But then she really got sick and ended up in the hospital. And it was only Dorinda, Jackie, and Karen who was there for her. And she felt that. Like, they came to the hospital and the fact that Denise and Twinkie weren't there, it really, really hurt her so much. It was so sad, y'all. And then the lady died. And they show up to the funeral. Everybody's wearing white. 
Denise shows up to the funeral with her seven sons that mama didn't want y'all to know about, but that's all right. We here. Okay. She get on the mic. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I was like, girl, if you don't get out of my face with this, <laughs> the way she got on that mic with that ignorance. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, I'm not playing with you, Denise. I am not playing with you. Okay. So Karen gets up there to get her off the mic, right? After they outside in front of the church. Now, this is when I get pissed off at Karen, Dorinda, and Jackie. Because I felt like I don't care how y'all feel about what she did in that church. To not allow her to ride in a car with y'all, I thought that was messed up. Because at the end of the day, that's y'all mama. These are y'all sisters. And y'all mama is dead and gone. And for y'all not to let her ride in a car with y'all oh i was so i was mad but at the same time when karen turned to denise and said try me i was like no not try me karen not sanctified and filled with the holy ghost try me outside the church at the funeral <laughs> i said child oh lord it was a mess i felt some bad for denise she was like y'all ain't never got to worry about me coming around ever again i was so hurt y'all i was so hurt about it i ain't even gonna lie because i just felt like at the end of the day when parents die we should like you know like love on each other at the end of the day so to see that happened in front of that church even though that was a messy moment that was you know i think it was jackie or uh, i think it was jackie that said that was her favorite part of the movie I just, she swung that wig around and said that was the her favorite part when karen said try me okay but ultimately i think it was just sad that they couldn't come back together you know what i'm saying so after that Karen went to have some type of elective surgery, probably like gastric bypass or something, because you know all of the church girls was a little thick, and now everybody then lost a little weight. I think Dorinda might have been the real only slim one, and now you see a few of them is slim now, okay? Child, after your mama, you know, died from the eating habits, you got to get yourself together, you know what I mean? You got to you gotta worry about your diabetic and your high blood pressure, baby. You got to. You're running your family. Okay, but the fact that all the sisters are still living and healthy and everything, I'm so, so grateful for that. Okay, but Karen went and had this surgery that put her in a coma for a week and a half. And it's a part of the testimony that she talks about all the time was that she wasn't supposed to make it. They said she had a 2% chance of making it. But her husband went out there in that chapel in that hospital and called all of the sisters and said, I ain't time for y'all to sing. Y'all get in here and y'all come pray. And they got down on their knees and they prayed. And when they came out of that chapel, Karen was healed. Karen had woken up. They was getting, you know, the brain waves was coming back. So Karen came out of a coma, okay? Twinkie had a nervous breakdown because she found it so hard to deal with the fact that she wasn't there for their mama when she died. That was very hard for her to deal with. She had like a little nervous breakdown. They had to put her in the hospital somewhere for a little while. And it was getting hard on everybody. You know, Jackie is the nurse. So Jackie is always taking care of everybody, but it was getting hard on her and she asked for Dorinda to step it up. Not realizing that Dorinda is going through it so bad, she was about to kill herself. She pulled up to the bridge like she was about to jump off and ask for the Lord to, you know, give her a message. And the Lord spoke to her. So she got back in her car and went home. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I was like, oh no, uh-uh. We can't have y'all jumping off of bridges and stuff, Clark sisters. We need y'all to sing. We need y'all to sing. But then all of the sisters came back, y'all. And Karen had her solo album. And Karen was the one that was always scared to go out on her own. And to see that she is, you know, the one that I think most people notice or know about. You know, it just goes to show how sometimes your mama be right about you. Y'all, when I was watching this, I was like, I got to stop playing. My mama is always complaining about how I don't sing enough. Okay. But anyway, so the sisters came back together to sing. And to put, you know, make more music together. The group came back together. And Twinkie was having a hard time. But, you know, Maddie talked to her from up above, okay? Told her that she had this. It's the Lord in her hands. I said, I know that's right. And get out there and you play and you sing for them people. So they got up there, y'all, okay, with the with the same dresses on, with the, with the black on and everything. And they get up there and sing. And then you see the transition. I love this. This is what I like to call the what's love got to do with it transition. When they get up there and perform and there's a shot where they transition from the person that is acting 
and the real live person performing. Okay, I don't know if y'all remember, but at the end of What's Love Got to Do With It, they did the same thing with Tina Turner. And they did that with them where they kind of like was moving the camera around them. And then they switched to the real sisters. And y'all, they were singing that, we are blessed and highly favored. Y'all, okay, I was like, chills, Jesus. Chills all over my body. Okay, chills all over my head, all over my body because the voices okay the voices y'all let's talk about it the costumage the hair okay everything was on point and matched to a t that grammy performance that they did the dresses the performance was the same ingenue ellis with the tight shoulders just like the mama when they was performing y'all they did an amazing job an amazing job with the aesthetics and, and matching of the time period and the hairstyle. Child, they had them hard hairstyles. Okay, the rainfall, child. Look, I cannot. But I thought it was excellent. I enjoyed it. It really could have been longer. It could have been a two-night situation. I'd have been here for it even more so because I enjoyed it so much, y'all. The music, man. That, that song that Karen wrote, because Karen wrote that song, the Blessed and Highly Favored song. Y'all, I'm going to be listening to that. And I'm sorry I didn't have more singing for y'all because I don't know their music like that. But child, <laughs> that's going to be in the back of my head for the next week, okay? We are blessed and highly favored. So the ladies went on to continue in, in their separate ministries and performing and singing and being a part of the church, you know, all over the world, all of them. And the movie was dedicated to their mom, you guys. It was beautiful. I'm just saying. I, I thought it was amazing. And it almost felt like Lifetime don't need to do no more documentaries, no more biopics if y'all not going to get these same people to executive produce. I saw Anjanou Ellis was also an executive producer on the movie. And I just think it, it showed through. Like, her performance was incredible. Kiara She playing her mama, incredible. Like, everything y'all I, I was so here for the movie y'all shout out to kiara she for paying her mama i was like girl you better play your mama like <laughs> child okay a blessing i mean when i think about how they are who they are because of their mother's calling and now to see like kiara be able to play her mom because of her mom's calling like that's a blessing to me y'all i love when i see stuff like that but either way y'all i enjoyed this movie so much i hope y'all enjoyed this little impromptu review because i didn't really make a lot of notes I, you know i kind of was just watching it to watch it and then so many people were you know asking me to review it i decided to get up here and talk about it but y'all they took us to church they took us to church and we was enjoying it child all of the black people was online tweeting and watching um the clock sisters movie so y'all could definitely give us some more content like this we appreciate it queen latifah missy elliott and mary j blige ingenue ellis and all the other producers that you know i know not of we appreciate y'all for this because we needed this <laughs> okay just know we are blessed and highly favored we needed this okay i needed somebody to put the clock sisters music in my life because i ain't know Okay, I know about that three-part harmony. <laughs> okay, but I ain't know about that music like that. You know, and uh y'all, it was everything. But anyway, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And y'all already know, okay, when we talk about that costume, it's how them glasses was on point. Y'all better check down below in my description box, okay, where y'all can get y'all some similar, okay, to the, to, the, to the glasses that Maddie was wearing. <laughs> okay, so cool with the straight face. Okay, look, y'all better get down below and get that Fermu link. All right, get y'all some of them, some of them little cute big glasses. Not everybody gonna be wearing them, bitch. I've been wearing them, okay? But you know, get on them if that's what y'all need to do. All right. Love y'all. See y'all in the next one.